Hi, good evening and welcome to Holy Trinity Warmwell. I'm reading Evening Prayer using the Common Worship Provision for Easter season. If you're following the Red Book, you'll find it towards the beginning, after prayer during the day, morning and evening prayer during ordinary time and the seasons. We're looking for Easter season. It's Tuesday the 24th of April and we'll be commemorating Melitus. O God, make speed to save us, O Lord, make haste to help us. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Sovereign Lord, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. To you be glory and praise forever. From the deep waters of death, you brought your people to new birth by raising your Son to life in triumph. Through him, dark death has been destroyed and radiant life is everywhere restored. As you call us out of darkness into his marvellous light, may our lives reflect his glory and our lips repeat the endless song. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. A Song of David Ye choirs of New Jerusalem, your sweetest notes employ The Paschal victory to him in strains of holy joy. How Judah's lion burst his chains and crushed the serpent's head And brought with him from death's domains the long imprisoned dead. Triumphant in his glory now his scepter ruleth all. Earth, heaven and hell before him bowing at his footstool fall. While joyful thus his praise we sing, his mercy we implore into his palace bright to bring and keep us evermore. All glory to the Father be, all glory to the Son, all glory, Holy Ghost, to thee while endless ages run. Alleluia. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. And so we turn to our Psalter, the back of the Red Book, if you're following there, or scroll down if, like me, you're on the app. And the Psalms this evening are 115 and 116, 115, 116. We use the prayers that follow in silence. Lord has been mindful of us, and he will bless us. Not to us, Lord, not to us, but to your name give the glory. For the sake of your loving mercy and truth. Why should the nations say, where is now their God? As for our God, he is in heaven. He does whatever he pleases. Welcome. I'm just starting on 115. And uh, you can join when I get to 116, if you want. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of human hands. They have mouths but cannot speak, eyes have they but cannot see. They have ears but cannot hear, noses have they but cannot smell. They have hands but cannot feel, feet have they but cannot walk. Not a whisper do they make from their throats. Those who make them shall become like them and so will all who put their trust in them. But you, Israel, put your trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. House of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. You that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. The Lord has been mindful of us, and he will bless us. May he bless the house of Israel. May he bless the house of Aaron. May he bless those who fear the Lord both small and great together. May the Lord increase you more and more, you and your children after you. 
May you be blessed by the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The heavens are the heavens of the Lord, but the earth he has entrusted to his children. The dead do not praise the Lord, nor those gone down into silence. But we will bless the Lord from this time forth forevermore. Alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The Lord has been mindful of us, and he will bless us. So we move on to 116. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. I love the Lord, for he has heard the voice of my supplication. Because he inclined his ear to me on the day I called to him. The snares of death encompass me. The pains of hell took hold of me. By grief and sorrow was I held. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beg you, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord watches over the simple. I was brought very low and he saved me. Turn again to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has been gracious to you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears and my feet from falling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed that I should perish, for I was sorely troubled. And I said in my alarm, everyone is a liar. How shall I repay the Lord for all the benefits he has given to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfil my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful servants. O oh Lord, I am your servant, your servant, a child of your hand, right? You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer to you a sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfil the vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem, Alleluia. Mm -hmm. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Amen. Gracious is the Lord, and righteous. And so we turn back to evening prayer during Easter season, to the canticle, A Song of Faith. Are you there? Yeah, A the Song of Faith. God raised Christ from the dead, the Lamb without spot or stain. Alleluia. Yeah. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you. Who are being protected by the power of God through faith, for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. You were ransomed from the futile ways of your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb with a spot or stain. Through him you have confidence in God who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Mm. Glory to the Father, Father and to the Son, Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. God raised Christ from the dead the Lamb without spot or stain. Alleluia. 
So if you'd like to turn up Deuteronomy 9, which uh, will be, the reading starts at 23, so Deuteronomy 9, um, we're remembering somebody called Melitus today. Melitus. Yep. And this is a letter of Pope Gregory the Great to Melitus following his departure for Britain in the year 601. To our well-beloved son, Abbot Melitus, Gregory, servant of the servants of God. Since the departure of those of our fellowship who are accompanying you, we have become incredibly anxious because so far we have received no news of the success of your journey. Therefore, when by God's help you reach our most reverend brother, Bishop Augustine, we wish you to inform him that we have been giving careful thought to the affairs of the English. We have come to the conclusion that the temples of the idols that are erected among that people should on no account be destroyed. The idols should be destroyed, but the temples themselves should be aspersed with holy water, altars set up within, and relics deposited there. Mm. If these temples are well built, they must be purified from the worship of demons and dedicated to the service of the true God. In this way, we hope that the people, seeing that their temples are not destroyed, may abandon their error and flocking more readily to their temples as usual, may come to know and adore the true God. And since they have a custom of sacrificing many oxen to demons, let some other solemnity be substituted in its place, such as a day of dedication or the festivals of the holy martyrs whose relics are enshrined there. On such occasions, they may, may well construct shelters or bows for themselves around the churches that were once temples and celebrate the solemnity without, with devout feasting. They are no longer to sacrifice animals to the devil, but they may kill them for food to the praise of God and give thanks to the giver of all gifts for the plenty they enjoy. If the people are allowed some worldly pleasures in this way, they will more readily come to desire the joys of the spirit. For in my view, it is impossible to eradicate all errors from obstinate minds at one stroke. And whoever wishes to climb a mountain does so gradually one step at a time, and not in one gigantic leap. Well, that rather was. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I know that it's one of these things people say, isn't it, about uh, festivals and things appearing on the same day as we were doing mm. things before we understood that Jesus was involved. Yeah. Um, and there we have it in black and white. <laughs> And that was 601. Yeah. Augustine was sent over and yeah. they sent that chap Melitus who'd been uh, in charge of a monastery um, to support him. And he was made, he was the first bishop of St Paul's. Okay. So um, our Bible reading is Deuteronomy chapter 9. Yeah. From 23. From 23. Just into the, the next chapter to verse 5. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Probably. Right at the beginning of uh, chapter 9, the heading is the consequences of rebelling against God. In 23. And then the Lord sent you from Kadesh Barnea, saying, Go up and occupy the land that I have given you. You rebelled against the command of the Lord your God, neither trusting him nor obeying him. You have been rebellious against the Lord as long as he has known you. Throughout the forty days and forty nights that I lay prostrate before the Lord when the Lord intended to destroy you, I prayed to the Lord and said, Lord God, do not destroy the people who are your very own possession whom you redeemed with your greatness, whom you brought out of Egypt with a mighty hand. Remember your servants, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Pay no attention to the stubbornness of this people, their wickedness and their sin. Otherwise the land from which you have brought them, brought us, might say, because the Lord was not able to bring them into the land he promised them, and because he hated them, he has brought them out to let them die in the wilderness. For they are the people of your very own possession, when you brought them out of your great power and by your outstretched arm. And the second little title at the beginning of chapter 10. 
is the second pair of tablets. At the time the Lord said at the time the Lord said to me, Carve out two tablets of stone like the former ones, and come up to me on the mountain, and make an ark of wood. I will write on the tablets the words that were on the former tablets, which you smashed, and you shall put them in the ark. So I made an ark of acacia wood, cut two tablets of stone like the former ones, and went up the mountain with the two tablets in my hand. Then he wrote on the tablets the same words as before, the Ten Commandments. And the Lord has spoken to you on the mountain, out of the fire on the day of the assembly, and the Lord gave them to me. So I turned and came down the mountain, and put the tablets in the ark that I had made, and there they are, as the Lord commanded me. As it seems odd to have those two bits stuck together for our reading this evening, because there seems to be quite a gap in action between mm, yeah. <laughs> the end of the um, chapter nine and the, apparently a totally new idea at the beginning of ten. But um, yes, at the end of nine, as you said, there was sort of a title at the beginning of the chapter. And we've just uh, been told, we've got Moses saying to the people, you've been rebellious. So for 40 days and 40 nights, I prayed to God not to destroy you, because otherwise the neighbouring tribes would think that God had brought you out here to kill you. Mm. Um, so basically Moses was saying to God, it would look bad on God if he kept his own people. <clears throat> and then we switch from that to um, this bizarre business of tablets being rewritten by God and uh, Moses going up the mountain to collect them um, and how the word was spoken by God in the first place presumably at the same time as it was written on the tablets I don't know um, but Moses smashes them when he has his paddy when he sees that uh, yeah. God's people have started to worship a gold calf mm. Don't express Instructions. Yeah. Strange so, enough, I've been reading part of Exodus at work, yeah. and uh, yeah, that touched on that subject. So yeah. But um, as a reason for having this in Deuteronomy rather than Exodus is that they might be different traditions writing similar yes. stuff and writing different times. Mm. Um, <clears throat> and so, effectively, if we're reading this as assuming it was written coming out of Babylon to go back to um, the land of their fathers, written by the leadership then, but pretending or setting the story at the time of Moses talking to the people coming out of Egypt. Obviously, we don't want the people that we're leading coming out of Babylon to go after false idols. We want them to remember that their ancestors were fell on bad times and died in the wilderness because they didn't obey God. We want the people that we're leading to obey us. We want them to remember that God gave the Ten Commandments not once but twice. Um, and uh, so we want to put that in mind of the people that we're leading without actually drawing too much attention to that, what we're trying to say now, mm. from our captors who are releasing us or whatever. Mm. We don't want to cause dissension or cause them to be too involved with us. Um, and then of course we now as Christians reading this today also need to be reminded that we are surrounded by other belief systems and we want God to get the glory so that we want to pray on behalf of those we have responsibilities for mm. that God will bless them to his own glory and to bring other people in yeah. and not uh, for people to be mistaken about what he's doing for his people and that these commandments were reiterated and they are there for us today.
So Ephesians 4 is our next one, chapter 4 of Ephesians. No, from 17. <laughs> Good question. The heading uh, earlier on in chapter 4, at the beginning, here it says, Paul reproves <coughs> the Galatians. <coughs> Reading verse 17. They make much of you. Mm, Ephesians. Oh, I've done it again. <laughs> Did I do this last week? I could have sworn I was looking at uh, Ephesians. It's uh, just lost. before, <laughs> isn't it? It's the book just before. Yeah. Oh. Ephesians 4, 17 should begin now, this I affirm. Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> Right, mm -mm. that's better. <laughs> we have now got the right chapter. Ephesians 4, 17 on. Excellent. Um, it, it, chapter 4 starts with a little heading, the unity of body of Christ. But this particular section, it's a little heading, Old Life and the New. <clears throat> now this I affirm and insist on in the Lord. You must no longer live as the Gentiles live in the futility of their minds. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of their ignorance and hardness of heart. They've lost all sensitivity and have abandoned themselves to licentiousness. licentiousness. Greedy to practice every kind of impurity. That is not the way you learned Christ. For surely you have learned about him and were taught in him as truth in Jesus. You were taught to put away your former way of life, your old self, corrupt and deluded by its lusts, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to clothe yourself with a new self, created according to the likeness of God in the righteousness and holiness. And then there's a little heading here, Rules for the New Life. So then, putting away falsehood, let us all speak the truth to our neighbours, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather let them labour and work honestly for their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, not only what is useful for building up, as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal on the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven. first of these two chunks is very straightforward. 
um, but quite interesting. So far in the letter, Paul, who was a devout Jew but felt himself called to preach to the Gentiles, mm. has been really quite sort of uh, generous mm. to the Gentiles and has used language that they would understand and talked about them being grafted in and inheriting the ancestry of the Jewish faith and whatever, as far as they need to, not needing to worry about some of the practices of Judaism and whatnot to belong. Um, but then suddenly here it says, um, now I insist, don't live as the Gentiles in the futility of their minds. Yeah. Um, and he effectively says the same thing over and over, but then concludes, clothe yourselves with a new self according to the likeness of God. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Um, and that's quite extraordinary, I think, this idea that we in Jesus can be renewed yeah. in, in our way of thinking. Yeah. Um, and then that links into the second bit, which is... Um, for the most part, like a practical instruction, initially it says, be angry but don't sin, don't let the sun go down, thieves and stop stealing, mm. um, don't speak evil, but then it goes on using slightly different words, so maybe the word anger in that first couple of lines is a slightly different thing to put away bitterness, wrath and anger and wrangling and slander. Mm. Um, it might be like a, a proper mm. uh, sort of emotional response to a situation. Perhaps, whereas the second is sort of listed amongst things that set up a people, because this would have been written to a church rather than to individuals. You know, he didn't, Paul didn't want the church to be seen to be one of anger and bitterness and slander, but to be known as being tender hearted. But then there's that line going back to that idea of being renewed in our minds. We are marked with a seal of the Holy Spirit as a seal of the day of, for the day of redemption. This idea of the Holy Spirit yeah. in us is. Yeah. Um, evidence that we are marked very important for the early church this idea of the Holy Spirit as being the mark of the seal it's very interesting they chopped it off at that point the reading because at the beginning of chapter 5 the next two verses are this therefore be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loves us and gave himself up for us a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Yeah, yeah, good point. Very odd that it stopped there. <coughs> so, let us thank God and rest in His changing of our minds to be more God like through the work of the Holy Spirit in us. Yeah. So, that we'll be known as a people of love and welcome and inclusion. So we turn back to evening prayer in the Red Book during Easter season for the responsory and we go on to the Song of Mary. The Lord is my strength and my song, he has become my salvation. The Lord is my strength and my song, he has become my salvation. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. He has become my salvation. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Alleluia. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him, from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones, and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The stone which the builders rejected has become a chief cornerstone. Alleluia. Let us pray. 
One God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, we look back over the past day and recognise there have been things about it that have been a disappointment or a frustration. Maybe things we have heard, things that we have said. Maybe we recognise that others were in the wrong in things they have done and equally we recognise that there might have been things about what we have said, thought, done that have not been right. We may not have been in your company, in your presence, guided by you, or at least ignoring the fact that we are in your presence. We may have felt let down indeed by our own abilities. Those frustrations may have given people the wrong impression. We may not have been able to do things we had hoped through lack of income, transport. Commun contacts or community. Maybe the weather wasn't as good as we had expected and so that has been, has hindered us. And so we offer all these frustrations and difficulties, upsets alongside others that may have set us back today. Thanking you that you came to live amongst us and that you experienced these things for yourself. And like our reading said, you may have become angry but did not sin. And so we pray to you for your healing, your restoration and your forgiveness for us and for others as appropriate. And also we look back over the day to recognising, however, on the other hand, things that have been good about it. Where we have achieved things that we have been glad of, where people have been a blessing to us and we have known ourselves to be things that we've done or said have been well received and have built other people up. Perhaps where things have unexpectedly turned out better than we had hoped. Where we have enjoyed health food, family, the place of where we live, and all other good things about the day. And for these, we give you thanks, recognising you are the source of all that is good. With open doors, we pray for Tajikistan, where Gul Nora, the wife of imprisoned pastor Barom Kolmatov is struggling with ill health and depression. We pray for her healing and for strength to care for her children. And we pray for peace of mind for Barom as he is separated from them. We pray for justice to be done and for him to be released, assuming he has done nothing that would be internationally recognised as worthy of arrest and imprisonment. And you provide for them as a family whilst separated, whilst he's incarcerated, but also once released. And we pray for the Christian community to be strong and safe in their support of one another and them. Mm. From Christian Aid, we pray for God's blessings on the Haiti country manager of Christian Aid, Prospery Raymond, as he travels around the UK over the next two weeks, helping groups prepare for Christian Aid week. From the Diocese of Salisbury cycle, we pray for Apicennet group of parishes. We pray for the benefits as they explore the development of a more sustainable model of mission and ministry. Pray for little angels, leaders of this outreach embeds in school and for the embryonic beginnings of a move towards the school becoming a baptising, confirming community. Pray for all others that they serve and work with and also for their treasurers, wardens, secretaries and their ministers Claire, Graham and Maria. And we also pray for their schools, Broad Hinton and Kennet Valley. Praying for the pupils, parents, governors, junior and senior staff, that all may know their lives to be more fulfilled 
through their contact with you in that place. And in our benefits, we pray your blessing on Chilbury Gardens, Church Lane, Gleeford Close, East Farm Lane, Golden, Hollinsmead Avenue, Holworth, Kit Lane, Misery Farm, Moynes Court, Morton Road, Pollards Lane, Ringstead, Wareham Road, Watercombe Farm, and Watercombe Farm Cottages in the village of Ermoyne. Pray your health, wealth, and prosperity, your salvation, healing, deliverance on the people that live there and work there, have their businesses based there. We pray for those businesses that will continue to thrive and flourish. Pray for the people in those addresses that are finding this difficult, that they will have help offered and be ready to receive that and perhaps even to ask for it. But they are aware that they are needing that assistance, both from Christians and others as neighbours and volunteers and professionals who can provide for it. We pray for those living amongst them who do have time and other gifts and talents that they may share, that they'll be moved to do that in their community. And if they do it in your name, that it will extend your kingdom. And pray for those who do not yet know you, that they'll be drawn to faith by all means. And that those that do, that they'll be salt and light amongst their neighbours. And finally, we pray for Helen, Mark, Carolyn, Rose, Ocean, David, Graham, Eric, Elizabeth, Bill, Julia, Peter, Liz, Leslie, Faye, Pam, Lydia, Steph, Brian, Jan, Harry, Julia, and others who are finding things difficult at the moment through poor health, poor finance, difficulties in or out of relationship, problems with work or with accommodation. We pray that you will move them to pray, that you will hear their prayers, that they will know your presence both directly and through believing and other people that may come to their assistance. Pray for wisdom and courage for these and for those that help them. And we pray for a good outcome. And where that is not to be, we pray that you will walk with them and that that will be an encouragement to all involved. Finally, we thank you for all that was good in the lives of Julia's dad, Leslie, Richard, Edna, Doris, Evan, Ivy, Evelyn, Marion, Pauline, Katharina and Graham, recently died, and all others who have died suddenly and unprepared through sickness, violence, neglect, those who have taken their own lives. We remember all whose years mind fought at this, at this time, including Miletus, those we've known and loved but seen no longer, those who've served you here. We thank you for Melitus' um, work for you in this country, mm. being prepared to leave, and for the foundation that he established, which we still follow, I guess, in the fact that there is this Church of England and we're meeting in this place that, like us not, found itself built on a place where worship had taken place before, like we heard in that letter. Mm -hmm. yeah. We thank you for all that was good in the lives of those for whom we've prayed, and we ask that we may be found worthy to follow in their footsteps, and that according to your promises to humanity, you grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. We pray for ourselves and all who mourn, that you will be for us the good shepherd, the way, the truth, and the life, that you will lead us by still waters, by green pastures, you will accompany, accompany us through the changes and chances of this fleeting life, whether we miss someone we have known and loved, or whether we are facing a change in our life chances ourselves, for whatever reason.
attendees of Paul and Cor, Barry, that he may have the right words as he attempts gently to minister to a friend that he's known for a long, many, many, many years, whose wife's died um, in the relatively recent past. And he himself is, I believe, got skin, skin cancer or something like that, and he's in suffering and will eventually pass over. From what I can understand, this gentleman um, has been very money centred over the years. seems to be his main thing in life. He's certainly not, has paid not a lot of regard to things of heaven and things spiritual, or not obviously anyway. But I give thanks that recently he asked, when Barry asked him whether um, he could pray for him and whether he would pray but he did so, which is quite a step considering all the years that have gone by. And the said conversations carry on. I would just ask that you give Barry the sensitivity and the right words, that he may be a light to that gentleman. And that will gentleman that's in a very dark place, I suspect, will see that light and something that will be kindled in him, and that he may reach out to you for, for, for salvation and forgiveness and to be put right. Um, if he's not already in that state. So I don't know the gentleman. You know him, just as you would have known his wife. You know who they are. But I just um, pray now that in some wonderful way that you will um, help meet his needs. And you will look on his soul kindly as he struggles make sense of the situation that he is in and that division between the practical, practical re reality of life, of keeping one's job and keeping a home over one's head and the, and the alternative rea reality, the just as real, the spiritual reality of one's inner life and the life that could be with you. So I just bring them to you now at this time. Just bless them both. Pass this in your name. Precious name, Lord, mm -hmm. no, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us.
O God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray. Sorry, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia. alleluia.